Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So we're going to go ahead and get started on a brand new project here in the shop. This is going to be a pretty short project. It may be one or two episodes long. I don't, I don't expect it to be much more than that. But we got a couple of elements that we're going to be implementing into this video. For one, we've got a cool collaboration that I'm doing with John Saunders at NYC CNC. So be sure to check out his channel. We've got a card up there for him. And if you follow my channel, you probably know that him and I are friends and he has helped me with a project on the k &T parking attachment in the past, did some CNC work. So John does a little bit of job shop work as well, especially on the CNC side of things. The manual stuff, I, I don't know if he does a whole lot of the manual stuff yet, but I know he's kind of getting into that. But anyway, he's got a couple of jobs there in the shop that he reached out to me and asked me if I could give him a hand. And I picked out one of these as being a job requiring a taper attachment for, you know, for the lathe anyway. Uh, that's what kind of job I see it as anyway, as a taper attachment job if you're going to use a manual lathe. So I told him that I could help him out with one of these. And it would also provide a pretty interesting video for you guys here on the YouTube channel. So we can finally talk about the taper attachment that I've had many requests to talk about. And I can get you in here and show you what the taper attachment looks like for the Monarch lathe and how we set it up and how it actually works. You know, we have a lot of people who don't understand how a taper attachment works. Maybe they've never seen one, maybe they've never used one, and they are a nice feature on a lathe. And I have to say, I'm probably biased, but uh, Monarch built a fine taper attachment. This is some excellent engineering, just like the rest of the machine is. And I've used a couple of taper attachments before on other machines. Really the only other two that I've ever used. I got one on the Victor laid down there as well. And it works. It works fine. There's also another one on the Act Return laid, which is at work. That, that's a lay that used to be at our shop too. And that one just never seemed to want to work correctly. I, I did, me and Dad got to, you know, got it to work, but just never really seemed to want to work good. So... I always enjoyed using the taper attachments on this Monarch here and as well as the big the big Monarch that we used to have that I showed back in a previous episode. It had the same style taper attachment except it was even bigger. So this is the job right here. This is the tapered mandrel that John needs made and it's nothing very critical. The dimensions are not too critical. I believe I have I believe I have a uh, tolerance Maybe it was in his email. I think I had a tolerance of ten thousandths, and it's just a, a manual. Um, it's just an arbor, a, a mandrel. I'm sorry, for somebody to I believe size tubing. That's that's really all it is. So John drew this up in his in his CAD program there, and it's a 0.9 inches taper per foot, and we're going to be using a piece of one inch diameter stock. And the tapered area is 12 inches long, and it's got a turned area of 4 inches long. And I believe that serves as like a handle. I'm not, I'm not really sure exactly how it's used. So the most important thing is, is getting the tapered machine on it. So since we're going to be using a piece of 1 inch, that's the largest diameter. I've got a piece of 1 inch here that I've cut and just kind of buffed it a little bit. This is some stress proof, so it's easy to machine. It's a free machining material. I think this will work out pretty good because the one issue that I have, and I, and I hope it ends up not being a problem, is the small end is only 0.1 or 100 thousandths in diameter. So that's a pretty small center down there on the end, a small diameter to get to. I think I have a center point that's small enough to work. I've got to uh, check that. I got it up in a toolbox and see, but we're going to try to work around that if we have to. So that's it right there. Uh, again, I, I wanted to emphasize the use of the taper attachment and try to give you a general overview. I don't intend this being a, an all-in-one video on everything about tapers and how to figure tapers and how to set up for tapers, but we are going to set up for this taper here. And I'm going to show you a technique that you can use to set up to make sure that you are traveling the proper distance on your cross slide, you know, your taper per foot. So. Next thing we'll do, I'll bring you around here and uh, show you the actual taper attachment. We'll, we'll talk about how this thing actually works. 
So here's kind of a, a general overview, you know, view at the, the entire taper attachment. And so you got a couple of things going on here. This channel right here, okay, this channel here, and then you got this block in the center, is attached to the cross slide here. You know, the lead screw and everything is attached to that. All right, so this piece right here, I've already got it loose and I've got all this cleaned up. It, it was really filthy, by the way. Got it cleaned up and kind of polished. All right, we got it loosened up and it's, it pivots there, right in the center. So down here on this, uh, on, the, on the right end down here, this is where you got your uh, Verdier scale and uh, angles that you can go by to uh, set your angle or taper attached or uh, taper per foot i'm sorry you got a couple clamps on each side so what's happened once you once you adjust this to your taper all right so we'll just kind of turn it like that and you kind of lock it in you got a couple other things you got to unlock this and there's another piece down here on the carriage that we'll show you in a minute that you have to lock also is once you once you get your taper attachment set the this part of the taper attachment stays right here okay it's it's actually this this piece here is attached to the carriage here and the cross slide is going to be following this angle you know this block is going to be sliding through here and as it's sliding you know it's it's moving that that cross slide in and out following that angle all right so I'll go over there and I'll, I'm going to crank the carriage a little bit so you can kind of see this how this whole thing moves a little bit. We've already got her locked in. And see, I don't have it locked. That's why it's twisting it there. But you can see the center piece of the tail of the uh, taper attachment is going to stay stationary. It's just going to follow that channel. So this is another important part of the taper attachment, the clamp block right here. This actually clamps tight against the, the square ways of the, the lathe right here. And this rod down here is attached to the taper attachment as well. So whenever you, you want to set this thing up and use it, what you have to do is tighten these two nuts here that pulls the clamp in tight that holds it against the ways and on this particular machine the monarch you have another bolt right here that whenever you're not using this you tighten this one up to uh, tighten up against that rod which is attached to the taper attachment as well so we have this one loose and then we have these tight and I'll move it a little bit so you can see what's going on right there so this clamp is what's holding the taper attachment in place and keeping it from moving. All right, so here's your here's your reading end of the taper attachment. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this just a little bit. By the way, you're probably looking down there, and for those of you who don't know, that's the machine sump or the that's the chip pan. Also, I just I kind of overfilled the the uh, coolant, the flooding, the flood coolant last time I put some in there. So it's actually the level is above the uh, the chip pan there. You can see that. So anyway, all right. You can see right here on this taper attachment, the upper line there is taper in inches per foot. All right, and then your bottom is in degrees. So that's your angle, and you have a zero in the middle. There's your zero. So you can either set it for inches per foot or or for the angle. And what's another really nice feature about the Monarchs is that they got this little magnifying glass right there. And I've tried to clean it the best that I can. It's to, to clean it fully, you got to kind of take this whole thing apart to get under there to wipe it. So I wasn't able to get it fully clean. But there's a line in the very center of that thing. So it makes it very helpful to line up with a, with a line for your taper per foot or for your angle and it'll put you very very close it's very accurate on this machine now if you're doing something say like a uh, a piece of pipe or a flange you know you're you're boring something for a pipe thread that's three quarter inches per foot i would say line this thing up on three quarter per foot 
the best you can with that magnifying glass, lock the thing down and go for it. All right, but if you're doing something really precision, you need to make sure that the part's indicated, you know, and running nice and true with that angle. Usually whenever we do a, a uh, whenever we used to do a prop shaft, I had a I had a good end, a good factory end that had a good taper, and I would use that as a as a sample to set up and, and indicate zero zero on the in the chuck and usually indicate that and get your taper attachment set. And what you do is that you know you you crank it down and run the indicator along the part and then whatever difference you had you come over here and you just slightly adjusted this until this thing is nice and straight and parallel with your taper. So on our on our part, I got the drawing over there, the taper per foot is calculated to 0.9 inches so it's going to be just over 7 eighths of an inch I know it's probably hard to see but we've got a 7 eighths line there and a 15 sixteenths and then the one that'd be one inch right there so I will line that up just past the 7 eighths and that's going to put me really close to 0.9 and then I'm going to kind of lock her in lightly and then we'll set it up and we'll do a little bit of indicating and see see how close we are and try to bump it in a little bit closer than that all right all right we're getting her set up and i'm just giving you a couple more shots of how everything looks here whenever we're moving this Back here, I've got a little yellow line that just kind of indicates a, it's a reference against an edge there on how far back this thing can go. It's uh, best not to go back and jam it, bump it, because it actually can move things a little bit. So I just go right before that little yellow line, and I know that's my, I can start setting it up just beyond that. And you can see the taper attachment there and how this block in there it's got roller bearings in there all this is roller bearing which is another thing that makes it really nice so inside that channel I've been kind of wiping it out as I go so it's still got a little bit of metal in there flaked in I've been wiping it that will affect your accuracy on your surface finish there so that block follows that channel Okay, so then I'll give you a shot here. Let's look down at that indicator. And we're going to go back the other way. Alright, so that's what's going on with the taper attachment. Alright, so one more look at the scale right here. I've got it, I've got the center line just past, say, 15 sixteenths line in there, you know, between 15 sixteenths and one inch. So our taper per foot is 0.9. So whenever we're traveling, the tool want you want the tool you, your tool to travel half of that. So 0.45 inches is what we want our cross slide to move. That's half of it. That's because you're cutting half, you know, on one side of it. So what we're going to do, we're setting it here and then we're going to indicate it. So we've got it set about where we want. I don't know where, I don't know where exactly it is. So I got it clamped down and I'm going to go to the other side and we're going to set it up for a 12 inch travel and check our cross slide movement. So this is where I'm going to be checking my, my taper to make sure that we have it set. And we're going to be measuring it for a 0 0.450 inch movement on the cross slide. So we're going to be doing a 12 inch span. So we're measuring taper per foot and half of it. So we'll move this back. And over here, going back a little further, over here on this side, I'm going to be setting this 12 inch scale up against where my indicator would originally set. Uh, come up and hit it to set a zero. I'm going to butt my 12 inch scale in there and I'm going to set this 
to the other end of the scale for our 12 inch travel and then we'll set this one on zero also so we'll start with this one we'll go ahead and come on back that's about the end there all right and then just start a forward movement to get the backlash out of it and just set a zero all right so we got this one set so now we'll come over here and we'll set this uh, a 12 inch gap right there I'll right, show you what I'm talking about where this point is going to come up basically it touches the uh, the way covers right there the uh, wiper covers I mean I don't wiper covers so we're gonna set a zero like that only what we're gonna do is we're gonna space it out 12 inches so I've just got a standard 12 inch scale right here I'm gonna butt it up there flat and we're gonna set this in to a zero on this dial indicator and I'm just trying to square it up make sure everything's square to the world I know it's not the perfect way to do it but it's a good way to do it and it'll get you right there alright so now we've got a 12 inch travel right there once this needle comes up and goes to zero that's exactly 12 inches or within a few thousandths anyway alright so I'm gonna go ahead and crank the carriage down and then we can measure it there and what we're gonna do is come up to that zero All right, so there's there's four hundred thousandths. All right, so we're going past a little bit. I'm going to come on in. All right, there's our zero. So there's our twelve inch travel, and we're at uh, looks like four fifty nine. So I need to adjust the taper attachment just slightly, and keep checking it until I get this thing to read to stop on the fifty thousandths mark there. So we got a clamp underneath here and then there's a clamp down here and then you got a little rack gear system that you can use this square drive to move it and we're very very close so we went past it what I say about nine thousandths so we're really only making a five movement on this so I stuck a, a mag back indicator right there just to kind of help watch to see how far I'm moving it and then I'll get it tuned in that way so we we're actually too we got too much taper so I need to bring it back that way just a little bit I'm gonna start with um, I'm trying to think I'm gonna move ten thousandths on that and see what it does go again minus zero it looks like we're right at it we're two thousandths off all right so I'll go try it again I'll make another very slight adjustment see if I can get it tuned in even even closer than that all right, I made that slight adjustment over there. We got this reset to zero, and we've got our 12-inch gap right there set. Come over here and read zero on this dial. And, all right, it looks like half a thousandths off. So I think that's close enough for what we're doing right here. It's uh, it should be everything should be within a few thousandths the way that I'm showing it right here, so we're gonna we're gonna go with it. And we got our zero reading there, and very close, very close to 450 there. All right, we're over here in the Victor lathe. I'm gonna get some of the work done ahead of time over here before we do our taper. So I'm going to give you a better shot at the, at the print right here. So on this end, we got to turn it down to 5 eighths, 4 inches long. We'll probably put us a little small radius there just to make it look nice. 
and on the other end I'll face it off and center it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this end right here and then put a little tiny center on that end of the shaft as well over here in the Victor. And then down there we'll do our turning, we'll do our taper turning in the Monarch. The, the, the Victor was already set up for the collet chuck, so it just made it nice and easy. It's, this is a little bit faster to do it right here, a little bit easier, so that's why I'm getting it done here. I got the opposite end face the link and this is the end I'm going to put a small center in the end so this is the smallest one I can find it's a number one center drill the pilot of it is about 45 thousandths in diameter so I'll go I measure it with some calipers I go about halfway up and hopefully this will cut Now I'm going to kick it up a notch. Let's run 1200 high gear. Okay, it's going to scream. It's hard to see that stuff, it's so small. Not a bomb size stuff right there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this little end turned down. That's going to be our finish cut, bring us down to 5 eighths. And that corner right here, I've been leaving a little bit of metal so I can go in there with a, with a, a radius nose tool and just make a little radius there. That's just one of my part and blade holders, I've showed that before, it's got a radius ground on the end. Stress proof is pretty easy to cut, so you don't necessarily have to have oil on it. You can see it did a really nice job. And I already beveled the back end right there. So I'm just going to give this a nice polish to knock the fuzz off right there. It finished 1,000 over, so it's 626 right now. So I'll polish it down. It, it's right there where we need it to be. I need to break that edge so it's not sharp. 
and we're going to go to the Monarch Lay.